Hey there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Come on into my stamp room and join me for another mystery swap with my friend, Jen Hartsgrove. We are collaborating again this month with digital stamps. We each picked out a digital stamp that we're gonna feature in today's video. I'm gonna make a card with the digital stamp that Jen picked and with the digital stamp that I picked and she's gonna do the same thing. We also sent each other a mystery package of stuff to use with those digital stamps. So it's tons of fun, I love it. I will leave a link below to Jen's video so you can check hers out as well. All right, let's start the mystery swap. First up, I'm gonna show you the things that I sent to Jen, starting with this digital stamp from the Not Too Shabby Shop. I will put a link to the Not Too Shabby Shop in the description box below because that is a free digital stamp that you can download and make your own cards with. I'm also um, using and sent these three die cuts using the Slim Fancy Diagonal Stripes <sighs> die from Pink Fresh Studio. I sent Jen three different colors so she could have fun, create a card that she wanted and they're fun to layer up too and I sent her some candy drops not the whole package but an assortment from this pack I did send her a whole pack of the be happy sentiments they're um, like foam with glitter on the top and they have adhesive on the back so these are all the things that both Jen and I will be creating with for my pick. So I'm gonna finish out my card with this and then we'll move on to Jen's. I'm gonna show you how I colored this cupcake. Now, um, I am a self-professed simple Copic colorer and I would say this is kind of taking it up to the next level. So I watched um, two videos that was put out on the Not Too Shabby YouTube channel on how to color this. So that is where my inspiration came from and I would say the video helped me greatly and so you should definitely check out their channel. I'll try and put a link to that below as well. So many links, I hope I can remember them all. And then if you wanna see like the professional color it, you can totally check out that video. But I have to say, I practiced a little bit before I am showing this to you and I really am quite pleased with how my cupcakes turned out, especially because I've never really colored anything this um, complex before with like, the really nice shading and highlights. So yeah, I'm really excited. I do have all of the marker caps on the screen and I will also insert a photo so you can see all of the colors I used on all the cupcakes right here. Okay, so the coloring continues just by blending between my three colors. I started with my light, went to my medium shade, and then my dark shade, and I just went back and forth with all of those colors, making those lines blend out a little bit more each time, uh, going back and adding some more of those shadows and defining those shapes a little bit, and then filling in some of the white with my lightest color. So there's just a tiny bit showing for those highlights, and wow. I was so, I'm not kidding, so excited about this. I had to take my cupcakes around the house and show my daughters, show my husband, look at these cupcakes that I colored. I was, yeah, I was tickled. So, <laughs> all right, I'm using my uh, colorless blender here. Just clean up a little bit of pink that went outside the lines. And then for my cupcake wrappers, I wanted all of them to be white. So I'm just adding a little bit of cool gray markers where I want kind of some shadows to be. And that seemed to work. I wasn't sure in the end if I would like them to be white, but um, when I got the whole card together, I felt that white was a good choice. Now on the video I watched on the Not Too Shabby channel, she made a watermelon inspired cupcake and I thought that was adorable. So that's where the idea for this cupcake came from and then I just tried to coordinate the three cupcakes together. Now I'm bringing in my Dark Bark or E49 Copic marker and drawing on some sprinkles. This was like super nerve wracking to me but I wanted them to be that sprinkle shape and so I just kept it simple and drew these kind of oblong rectangles with rounded ends and it was really easy to do. Then I shadowed those or gave them a highlight rather with a white gel pen. 
and that is that. So here's the other cupcakes. I, um, of course, they're digital stamps, so you're gonna have to fussy cut, but you can see here, I turn the paper with my left hand while holding my scissors still in my right. And they're pretty easy to cut out, but if you don't like cutting, then you probably already have a brother scan and cut and could do that with these. So there's all three of the cupcakes. Love them. All right, so I wanted to add sprinkles to the chocolate cupcake, so I pulled out these leftover pieces I had from the swap that Jen and I did last month. I saved all my extra things, and so I colored them with my Copic markers to match my cupcakes. I'm putting a little of my Tombow glue on the back and then rubbing that out, and then I'm going to use my piercing tool to press these onto my cupcake. Even when this glue dries, it stays tacky, and it will form a permanent bond if you leave it there or it can be a temporary bond if you pick it up and move it right away so it worked out really good for these little sprinkles I'll also add in the green ones that I colored and some white ones to finish off the sprinkles on here and I love how they turned out I was so happy that I thought to use those because I couldn't really I didn't want to do the dark brown sprinkles on the chocolate cupcake so this worked out really good. I am just taping a bit of twine um, on the back of the cupcake and then twine a little, tying, <laughs> twining, sorry, okay. Whew. Tying a little bow um, around the cupcake. And I thought it was so cute. I tied a bow on all three of these cupcakes. Then later when I got the card put together, I felt like it was too much. So you'll see me remove some of those later. Or I'll show you how I remove them later. All right, I am using this craft colored cardstock striped panel for my card and I'm gonna glue that onto a panel that measures three and three fourths by eight and three fourths, which is the exact size of this die cut. And so when I adhere them together, you won't see any pink on beyond the outside of this die cut. And so you just need to take a little time to put the glue on all those little stripes. Okay, I am putting my cupcakes on my card with some foam squares to pop them up. So I did the pink and the green on the outside, pop them up. Then I took the foam squares and put them in between to pop up the chocolate cupcake. And you can see there, all, twine on all of them is a little busy. It's a little much. All right, I'm bringing in those Be Happy Foam Sentiments, and I'm just laying it on here thinking which one I'm gonna like, and I decided to go with thanks, because the next card I'm making is also a thank you card. So I thought two thank you cards would be good, and then you could write on the inside, thanks for being sweet, give somebody a cupcake with it. It's perfect. All right, here's the candy drops. I love these little guys. They're so cute, and they come in the best colors. So I'm just going to stick these on kind of um, trying to make clusters of three in three different spots on the card. So you'll see me move things around a little bit till I get it where I like it. And I then will really press them down so they take hold of the paper. And I love that it had the colors that I picked out. I didn't even think about it when I was coloring like, oh, will this match my candy drops? So um, I'm really glad that it worked out in the end. And there you have them, so cute. Okay, now I'm gluing this panel onto my card base, a dark brown card base, and the card base measures nine by eight inches, and I scored it at four inches to create my slimline card that fits in the business size envelopes that I have. Check your business size envelopes when cutting your slimline cards to make sure that it'll fit, because they're not all created equal. Now I'm taking a white gel pen and putting stitching marks all the way around for some more added interest and I whew, love how it turned out. Love it. All right so now let's bring back those um, foam stickers and add some more of them. Oh you can see I did decorate the inside and take off that twine and then I added a heart to my mint like grasshopper cupcake, and then this little asterisk sign on, on my pink one. But I didn't love the um, heart because of the, that you could see through the middle. So I took it off and stuck it to a piece of silver cardstock and then reattached it, and I liked it so much better. And because I did so much practicing, I had that extra cupcake for the inside. Okay, here is the package that Jen sent me, and this is where I got the inspiration for the colors that I chose for card number two. There's a lot of different patterns here, like I couldn't even use all this up if I 
tried. It's so much. Thank you, Jen, for all the choices and great color inspiration. So I have a lot to work with here. And next, I'm going to show you the digital stamps that she chose from My Favorite Things. These are um, a free digital download only for a short time, only through the end of April. So I will put a link to where you can get those because it was in a blog post. And you can check those out if it's before the end of April. And if not, these are available as regular stamp sets for purchase. Okay, so there's the things for card number two. I have colored each of these with Copic markers. I did not show the coloring because I am not good with hair and skin coloring. That is definitely the next thing I need to keep practicing on. So not showing that. And then I, again, fussy cut these out. And here's all four of them. I am going to use all four of my card. I think they're adorable. And then I am taking that paper that Jen sent me. I cut four pieces. They each measure two inches by three and a half inches. And I'm going to glue them down to this panel that measures three and three fourths by eight and three fourths. And they fit on there perfect with a little bit of space around each of these rectangles. So just gluing those, alternating the colors. And I like that the green is kind of plain with a little bit of texture. And then the purple has those little circles on them. I think that's really fun. So that's all glued in place. Then I can add on my little people and I'm gluing down the two in the center. And then I will add my sentiment strip across the middle of that. Um, the sentiment is from those digital sets that I showed you. I don't remember which of the four it came from. And I just cut it straight across the paper. So it's uh, eight and a half inches long. So it will fit from edge of one rectangle to the edge of the other. It's perfect. And then my two um, people on the end, I will pop up with some foam tape or foam squares. And that is so fun. So I'm gonna add this to my card base. Again, it's nine by eight and scored at four inches. So I decided if I'm making a slimline card for the first card, then they both had to be slimline cards. So I like to have a theme. It makes, um, I don't know, making choices for my cards a little bit easier when I kind of stick with a theme. All right, so I added a few more of those digital images to go on my card as just some accents. I have the little vitamin or pill bottle and then this little medicine dropper shots. It's, it's a shot, really. Yeah. I guess it could be a medicine dropper. It, whatever you want it to be, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of medicine in there. Maybe it's a vaccine that we're all hoping will happen, right? And I'm putting those on with some foam squares. Pop them up right around my sentiment. And then I'm bringing in some glaze, and I'm going to add it to the heart to that medicine dropper. And then on the circle part of each of their stethoscopes, just for a little added shine. There you have it. On the inside of this card, I'm adding some of those die cuts that Jen sent me, a panel to write on, and then I popped out some of those letters and added my hero on the inside. And that finishes up card number two. I cannot wait to see what Jen made at the time of this um, voiceover. I have not seen what Jen makes. I We don't like to show each other until the video comes out so we can be surprised right along with you. So um, I will link that in the description box below. And I will also, at the end of this video, put a link to last month's mystery swap right here. In case you didn't see that one, you can check it out right now. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. Happy stamping. I'll see you again soon with another video. Bye.